It's Election Day in Nigeria. We're live in Abuja where we're, we continue to monitor election experience uh, for Nigerians in a day that many people look forward to electing the next president and indeed members of the 10th National Assembly. I am Nifemi Okuntoye. And I am precious, Amaya, we can tell you that we have um, our reporters across the country. And if you've been following TVC News Live, uh, you will see that we'll be bringing you updates from across the country, all um, 28, uh, 36 states, rather, of the Federation and the FCT. And so it would seem that INEC has outdone itself this time. This is the first time uh, in the last... Um, 12 years thereabout, mm -hmm. where general elections will not be postponed. In 2011, remember that um, um, INEC, as a matter of fact, election had started in some parts yes. of the country before the Electoral Commission announced postponements uh, due to some logistical I challenges. remember it was just at 3 a.m. Nifemi where, you know, the news trickled in that the election might be postponed. But, you know, as a journalist, you still head to the studio hoping, you know, we were wondering is this true or not. And then by the time you get to the studio, it was true. And then it's, the story changed. Absolutely. You know, we moved from just reporting the election to now reporting the postponement of that election. But let's also remember that in 2015, the election was also postponed. And the reason given at the time was the fact that um, PVCs were poorly distributed. And that also, um, I think the Boko Haram activity uh, they, also contributed to The military the said that it needs one week for a special mm -hmm. operation against Boko Haram. In and that worked because eventually elections held in some areas where you had Boko Haram insurgency predominantly. And that worked. 2011 as well, mm -hmm. um, it was postponed. And, 2019. And, 2011, 20, um, 2015, and 2019 has been postponed. And that's why, you know, if, if I mean, you know that rumors were rife and speculations were rife about whether this election was going to be postponed, especially with the cash crunch that we saw. And people felt like, look, this will be postponed because of the precedents we've seen over the years. Well, INEX says that he has the cash to mobilize uh, its uh, materials and personnel. However, uh, we're also getting reports from the field. Uh, it's exactly 30... Five minutes after the voting time approved by INEC, and uh, we're hearing that there was some delay in parts of the country, but INEC is saying all hope is not lost. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission actually admitted that um, the commission initially had issues opening polling units in some parts of the country, and he's saying that um, they're going to extend the voting time in those areas. He spoke earlier at the International Conference Center where INEC is briefing journalists' updates as regards this election. And 27 coalition agents for the National Coalition as nominated by the 10 political parties. And we printed those cards and delivered them in the mail to the state where they were collected by the church chairman of political parties. But not all the parties nominated agents for all the polling units. So we did what we were supposed to do. And if there are issues, then definitely these issues will not be from the commission. But we also realized and that is why we created a portal that parties would like to issue agents their own cards bearing only the logos of the party and the word agent. The INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, speaking there, giving an update as to the conduct of the election so far. He did speak on um, security. He talked about the security situation in some parts of the country. He mentioned Alawa in um, Shiro local government of Niger State. He talked about how bandit, there were bandit attack, attacks in, some, in that particular area. So the election had to be, um, they had to hold on on the election. But the election is now eventually being conducted there. He also mentioned Oshimi local government. Um, of Delta State. We're also hearing that attacks have moved from snatching ballot boxes to uh, stealing the, the, the beavers bee machines. Uh, and, but um, he assured that in those areas the um, electronic device has been replaced and elections continue. He also did mention uh, the complaints about accreditation tax getting to some party agents. Mm. Uh, he made some clarification as to 
the authentic tag that must be used by and Bati it has to come election. from INEC it and is. that you can wear your uh, party tag it has to come from INEC because he addressed that because it was um, generating issues and concerns among um, uh, political parties but that has been addressed but you know we've had election observers on the field following this election um, both from Nigeria and outside of the country, foreign observers as well. And we have one of them with us here in the studio. He's going to tell us some of the things he's observed. Um, he's Barry Andrews. He's a member of the European Parliament for um, Dublin. He's also the chief observer, European Union election observation mission to Nigeria. Good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, so uh, it's an amazing time for Nigerians, and we're glad that um, we have quite a number of foreign observers monitoring this election. It's perhaps the highest contingent that we've had in the history of elections in this country. But you look at the figures, too. We have a high, a high volume of voter register. Anek is saying that registered voters in Nigeria is more than all of the registered voters in West Africa. So these exercises, you're holding election in West Africa and some parts of Central Africa. How significant is this for the continent and indeed the world at this well, time? Well, it's a great point and, and many people I've spoken to have raised this issue. That is that Ni Nigerian democracy is important to Nigerians principally, but it is really important for the region, for all of West Africa and for the African continent. And uh, that's why the European Union invests so much time and expertise into the election monitoring uh, exercise. We're here at the invitation of INEC. Uh, we're here to make an assessment best based on the criteria uh, that Nigeria sets for itself through international covenants and its own legislation. So it's a, a very good relationship and we have made recommendations and conclusions in previous elections in fact, in each of the presidential elections since the return to democracy in 1999. So we've developed, I think, a relationship of trust, and what criticism we make is made in a spirit of constructive relationships and trying to deepen the, uh, deepen the roots of Nigerian democracy. Mm. And we expect to see some of the, uh, the, those criticisms, because like, we know that you are going to produce a pre preliminary report in two days' time, and then the final report will come um, three months' time. But you were at a polling unit today um, in Wuse, if I'm correct. What was your experience like? Well, yes, we were, we were at a, I personally was at polling units uh, this morning in Abuja and this afternoon. Um, we have 100 observers across the country in each of the 36 states. Um, and we have been here since early January. So you know, what's happening today is, of course, of critical importance. But this is an entire process that we're looking at. So we've been observing the entire election process from uh, the legislation, the judiciary, the media, every aspect of security, the operation of technology, and we'll stay here for the governorship elections on the 11th of March, and we'll stay into late April in order to finalize the final report that you mentioned, which will, carry, which will contain the conclusions and recommendations of this mission. So it's a, it's a very detailed project. It's not just about the polling day itself. Talk to us about the standards and international conventions by which Nigeria's performance will be measured with as we get to this election? Yeah, so I, I think the shorthand is we looked for inclusivity, transparency and credibility. Uh, so in terms of inclusivity, we're looking at whether or not uh, there is the ability to run for election, for, including for minority groups and also for women. Uh, we look at the question of transparency, which is whether or not the Electoral Act is full, fully observed and implemented. We look at the question of credibility. So the security situation comes into that. But each of these criteria are contained, as you say, in international conventions uh, that Nigeria has already signed up to. So it's not as if we're you know, bringing in some standards that Nigeria isn't already settled as wanting to adhere to. These are standards that have already been set. And we follow a methodology as a mission, uh, which it has you know, stood the test of time. As I said, we've been here each time in Nigeria, but we've done this in uh, countries across the world uh, for the last 30 or 40 years. Mm. Uh, and be just because you, me you mentioned you've done this for countries in the world, uh, and we know that you would have that report out, in a preliminary report out in just a few days after the election, but are you going to stay, uh, uh, will your report also extend till after the election, when results, after results have been collated? And then what do you think in terms of comparison between our electoral process, uh, where we are now today, and probably may maybe the rest of Africa? Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting question, but certainly we are going to stay here uh, past the governorship elections, and if there's a, a second round on the presidential, we'll stay for that, and then we will continue to finalize our work into early April, and then within three months after the end of the election, we'll do a final report with conclusions and recommendations. Um, but we don't compare elections. We just look at it 
from uh, in and of itself, based on the uh, observation that we received from our long-term observers in the ground, on the ground and the short-term observers that were deployed during the course of this week, and the work of our experts. We have an election technology expert, mm -hmm. we have social media experts, uh, we have legal experts, and they are providing us with the kind of insights that will allow us, I think, to pr produce a constructive report uh, for the people of Nigeria. We have seen you have consultations and meetings across the board, particularly with um, chief observers of African Union and ECOWAS, Thambo Beki, former president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta. A lot has been said about the need for foreign observers to be neutral and not interfere in the electoral process. How well would you say you have performed? Because you said you've been monitoring this election since 1999. Absolutely. That's a great question. There's a few people outside the studio who are watching me very carefully to make sure that I don't say anything <laughs> that could be perceived as <coughs> interference in the election process. So I think that's why we're, uh, we have such a good relationship. It's why we were invited back all the time. And uh, as I say, I, I met at one of the residential, uh, one, one, one of the uh, election commissioners in Lagos, and he told me that he had been in my country observing my presidential elections in Europe. Mm. And so it's a, it's a relationship of mutual respect uh, based on the standards that we've all adhered to. And, uh, and I think that's why we're, we're asked to come back time and time again. Mm. And I know you said you don't compare, so you won't compare <coughs> countries within Africa, but at least you can compare Nigeria to Nigeria, because you have been here since 1999, you, you've always sent um, observation, sorry, foreign observers mm -hmm. to Nigeria since 1999. And um, when you look at where we are coming from, what would you say about the recommendations made um, by past EU uh, uh, um, missions to Nigeria? Yeah. So in 2019, uh, we did exactly the same thing. We did a preliminary report a couple of days after the election, and then we, we did a final report within three months after the election. But three years later, so that is just a year ago, in 2022, uh, we came back and did an electoral follow-up mission. And we uh, sort of x-rayed the recommendations that we had made to see the extent of uh, implementation. And what we found was that 13 of the recommendations we had made were implemented or partially implemented. Out of how many? Out of 30, I should have said. Out of 30. Out of three zero. So 13 out of 30 were already uh, fully implemented or partially implemented. And of the remainder, some of efforts had been made or discussions were ongoing. For example, women's participation in politics is an issue that was brought up before, um, and an effort was, you know, a bill was put before the House before it was rejected by both chambers. So that's not implemented, but efforts were made in that regard. So overall, I think it underlines uh, that we are listened to. Uh, when we come here, uh, we've had excellent engagement with all stakeholders, media, uh, civil society, the political participants themselves, and the judiciary. And so uh, we should be able to uh, add some value in this uh, really, really important day. Did you, uh, sorry. Yes. Right. <laughs> Did you get a feedback as to the 17 other recommendations that were not implemented? Yes, yeah, so this is an exercise that we carry out ourselves, and it's in the public domain. We published this uh, follow-up report, and we were able to give an assessment. So there are some of those 17 where uh, we would not describe it as implemented or partially implemented, but some discussions are ongoing. Uh, with the authorities on those, uh, uh, among the authorities, not with us, of course, uh, we, we were simply um, external to the entire process, but certainly there are discussions going on in the overall uh, Nigerian political system to try and advance some of those. So um, it's, uh, you know, we, we are careful to follow up on our missions and to, and to examine whether or not we are having an impact. I was going to ask Alia if you've had any cause to change your recommendations because you know now we, we you see that the situation in Nigeria today is not the same situation in Nigeria in 2019 election. Um, the, the conversation today is, is slightly different. Um, we're talking about the beavers today. Um, 2019 we did talk about we were talking about card readers. So do you have a, a, any cause to change your recommendations as as you monitor our elections? Well, the, the recommendations will come out at the end of the process, that is, three months before the, after the end of the election. So that's sometime in the, you know, April or May, we'll, we'll produce that final report. And that recommendation will be based on all of our observations from early January all the way through. As I mentioned before, we won't compare with previous situations with card readers, but we will have regard to the operation of BVAS, how it's operated, how the Electoral Act has been implemented, and INEX powers. Uh, so, and we have a data analyst who's working, uh, uh, gathering information today. We have an election technology analyst who's going to examine the, all of the technology behind the BVAS and how it operates. 
and we ultimately that will lead into the kind of recommendations we will make for the future and hopefully it will be as well received as previously. We hear that you have close to 100 observers in Nigeria and they've been here since January. Talk to us about the quality of collaboration you're getting with other critical stakeholders uh, making your job easy as you observe this poll. Yeah, we think uh, you know, we, we, we uh, have a long-term approach to all of this. So it's not just about what happens on election day. Um, and we have found that stakeholders have had an open door for us. Uh, we have been able to speak with civil society uh, throughout Nigeria. We've been able to have conversations with key political participants, uh, with church leaders, with, um, with the judiciary, with the media. And that has led to a very uh, productive uh, uh, reporting into our, into our headquarters in, in Abuja. Uh, but it's premature for us to draw any conclusions right now. What's happening today, of course, is the critical event. Indeed. And I think that it's, you know, we're, it, 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 the polling units that I was at this morning, it was really extraordinary to see people turning up. And our key message really is we want to see a peaceful day today. We want people to be able to exercise their political right to vote unhindered, to be able to exercise their franchise. And uh, so we'll, we'll provide our assessment in a couple of days' time. And beyond, uh, beyond interacting with stakeholders, do you interact with Nigerians as well? And what are you hearing from them? Yes, well, in the polling units this morning, I took uh, time to speak to voters who were queuing up and trying to exercise their uh, political right to, to vote. Um, and it's very hard to draw conclusions from specific uh, input that you're getting from individuals standing in the queue. But So what we're looking for is patterns. We're looking to see, not to look at isolated incidents and mm. to build something more out of it than is the case. We're looking at the um, situation across the country. Uh, we're looking at uh, the, you know, any issues that are arising. If we can see them uh, happening in common across different states, then this becomes relevant to the kind of report that we produce in due course. But yes, we've had conversations with ordinary Nigerians. And ultimately, we're here because we want to uh, help ordinary Nigerians to be able to uh, be proud of their democratic system, uh, be proud of the key role that they play in the region and, uh, and really have a, a future for so many young people uh, here in Nigeria. So I, I see that you're holding the details of your observation <laughs> close to your chest. I As, understand absolutely. that um, there's a formal report that is expected two days after the election and a more robust report in a three months' time. But you have studied the Electoral Act because this is the first election we're having after you know, an improved law. Talk to us about the themes that you, the conversations you've had as regards to this law uh, with the stakeholders and some of the observations you've made. Yeah, well, as with any electoral system, uh, the regulatory environment is absolutely critical. And obviously, INEC had the central key role here in the full implementation of the Electoral Act. Um, and I think it has. I think it's widely accepted that it has improved public confidence in the electoral process. Um, but nevertheless, we will examine it in the same way as we're examining all the other moving parts of the electoral process here in Nigeria. And we will let that become part of the preliminary statement. I don't mean to frustrate the questions that you're asking, but naturally we, we have to gather the whole picture before we share um, our findings, uh, and as I say, on Monday this will be a preliminary statement. Um, we will we will share that with the with the public, and we will hold a press conference and an answer any questions that you have on that day, and hopefully provide you a little bit more detail. Than Absolutely. Able to today. But if I get you, if I get you, uh, if I understand you correctly, your recommendation will also include the electoral act, and not just the electoral process itself. Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, that, that is if we conclude that there are reforms that are required under the, under the Electoral Act. We would, uh, in previous occasions, have looked at uh, recommendations that require constitutional change, recommendations that require administrative changes, and some that require legislative changes. So uh, the Electoral Act obviously falls into that category. But that's not to say that we're going to make any recommendations about reform of the Electoral Act. We may well do so. Um, and we will, you know, what happens today is so important to all of that. Uh, the, the, the technology, the security, and then what happens later if certain cases are taken in the, in the courts, if litigation follows, a lot of that will be interpretation of the Electoral Act. So it will be premature to draw any conclusions right now. Um, and I think really the final report will be the key one in respect of the uh, operation of the Electoral Act. Well, it's a history-making event in Nigeria, a seventh successive general election, and we're kind of excited about it. Barry Adams, 
Andrews, rather, member of the European Parliament for Dublin and chief observer of the European Union Election Observation Mission to Nigeria. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for having me. Thanks for, thanks for talking to us. All right.